Thanks a lot for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on Nigerian newspapers this morning. I have about uh, 10 papers here with me. Let's check them out, beginning with The Punch. It heads its big story as presidential primary screening. APC questions Tinubu, Umahi, Bakari and others on foreign citizenship as well as consensus and other issues. Also, Daily Trust is um, talking about the presidential screening uh, at the APC at the moment. Oyegun-led committee grills, uh, Tinubu, Umahi, Amechi, as well as Badaru. Many others are also to be screened, including the Vice President, Oshibajo, Lawan, Fayemi, and others uh, reported to uh, be appearing today. Well, for another APC presidential aspirant, talking about Tunde Bakare, he's said to have made a comment now about the Atiku emergence, uh, that, talking about uh, the flag bearer of the opposition, PDP. He says, well, Atiku's emergence is not a threat to us. For blueprints, still on the APC screening exercise, Oyego Committee seeks consensus commitment from presidential aspirants. We are ready to step down for right candidates, say uh, Bakari and Uju. John List also back from screening venue. Uh, Amos Uwajuba, as well as Amichi and six others take turns. Oshibaju remains our best if APC is to win in 2023. That's according to Gaia. For the nation, what Tinubu told APC screening panel by aid. All right, that's the big story there. For the riders, uh, states that former Lagos Governor Amechi Umahi Bakare, eight others screened on Monday. Oshiba Jolawa, nine others to face Odige Oyego panel today. And uh, another rider there, Jonathan, not listed. Let's go to The Guardian. That's how The Guardian is also uh, leaning on the absence of former president. Uh, good luck, Jonathan as um, APC screens presidential aspirants. Let's check other newspapers out. Nigerian News Direct is um, also talking about the presidential race with Jonathan Ngige Silva, a Mayfieli miss out, as APC screens Tinubu, Amechi, Umahi, and others. That's still uh, the big story for the leadership, but this time around it's... Um, talking about the uh, fresh developments in the PDP. North Rally's Round Atiku Guso presents ex-VP to IBB tomorrow. Wiki accuses southern PDP governors of betrayal. Uh, the Rivers governor as well as Ugwai Ikpazu Okua team tipped as running mate to Atiku. Plus, OB emerges Labour Party uh, flag bearer. So that's for the leadership. Let's uh, check out this Nigeria. We came to PDP Southern colleagues. You betrayed me, he says. False party for allowing Tambowal speak twice during presidential primary. Atiku visits Rivers Governor, other rivals for support. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. In the meantime, Vanguard is also talking about the PDP ticket. Uh, the governor of River State, Wiki, is also uh, reported to uh, say fellow Southern governors betrayed us and how Northern Power Brokers secured victory for Atiku. More riders there say Atiku on fence mending, visits to Wiki, IAM, Saraki, and others. Ohaneze denies rejecting Atiku, says group yet to take a position, while Otom Fintiri Oborovori, as well as Walid Jibrain Hale Atiku. His emergence as PDP candidate divine. That's according to a diaspora group. We talk economy now, uh, going by the national economy, which says that economic hardship forces Nigerian businesses to adopt sachet marketing. Gentlemen, that's the final paper at this time. Uh, but of course, as we see, Many, many others are looking the way of politics uh, at this time. Talking about the PDP uh, candidature of um, Atiku Abubakar, now we know uh, where the PDP is headed, but looking at um, the likes of Wike who are still smarting over Atiku's emergence, is that to be expected? No, the point there is it is very expected that someone who was very phenomenal, like uh, Wike in the political party, you can't, you can't just wave him away. 
Because the point there is, if you saw what happened at the presidential, uh, the, sorry, the PDP uh, convention, we, we was we, we coming was was heavy, right? So he's not someone you're going to wish away and then say he's not uh, significant. He's very significant. I mean, if you look at what the vanguard, for example, is saying, now he has tagged it, it a betrayal, and it makes one wonder if indeed there was an agreement no, amongst re them. Recall, recall, recall that uh, sometime last year, the governors, governors uh, southern governors came together, even across party lines, to say that the, pres the, the presidency should, you know, come to the south. You know, and in the next president should, should come to the south, and it was it was an agenda that they all had together until uh, activities in the recent build up to the convention where things had to change. So the point there is, he still had the uh, understanding and the feeling that one way or the other, the governors who came together to say that the presidency should come to the south still had that as an agenda. You know, so it's normal, very natural for him to feel betrayed one way or the other. And, and now there are options, or uh, Governor Wike is among the options now, or well, if you go by what the reports are saying, uh, as well as you know, other Southern uh, members of the party. It, it makes one wonder, even though Atiku has said he's uh, you know, out to placate everyone, he's, cause well, he's working at making it a general win for the party and not just all about him. Oh, I think that... Uh, Wiki was very dramatic yesterday when he was talking. He was at once beating his chest and also lamenting, you know. Uh, he said that uh, nobody can take Rivers people or South for a ride, and that, that the South itself played a good role. They, made, they, they showed themselves as a very um, powerful force in Nigerian politics, and that the North cannot take uh, the South for a ride. But what is more significant was that he, he took a swipe at his fellow uh, southern governors and saying that they betrayed. In other words, he's saying that if I was able to fish in northern waters, you shouldn't have allowed the north to fish in southern waters. For instance, if you look at the, the voting pattern, I'm sure he was also attacking the east, the way you are predominantly uh, PDP governors. Where even in the East, you had, I mean, almost 400 delegates. And the, if you combine all the votes of all the presidential candidates from the East, they're not up to 20. <laughs> so I say, so I, I think it was in one of the, in one way, it was kind of taking a swipe at the, at the East, especially. But it didn't come out clearly to say it. That, look, the East is saying, we deserve to have the president. But look at your delegates. They voted for their pockets over, over their region. <laughs> even, even, even before the factor of money so, comes into play yeah. now, there is also the issue of the northern delegates you know, having a sizable uh, advantage over yeah. the, the delegates in the south. And well, even though the party said they left it open, mm. uh, well, the, the, the other we, factor we, we came was out implying, to play. Wigge was implying that he was able to make forays into the north. Mm. That's what he was implying. Yeah. But that if the southerners had stayed with him, had stayed the course, he would have swept it. Yeah. Well, it was, but, but it is expected <laughs> that if he was like, like you, like you put it, if he was able to also make make way into the north, the north will also make way into the it's south. south yes. It is a very normal thing because so, so, point, because so, beyond beyond the issue of you are north, I am south, or I am south, you are north. The issue of I have friends in your house, and you have friends in my house. Yes. So, so it, it, we have to give and take. That, that's how it goes. Yeah, but, but he was talking. It was it was more in, in it was more uh, concerned with the irredentism hmm. of the sweepstakes yeah. in the in the whole thing that some some northerners who were running were ganging up. Remember that they also wanted to get a northern consensus. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. Because because they, they settled for Bala and uh, and um, Saraki, mm -hmm. so Tambua pulled out, and maybe that is why that is where his bonding with Atiku mm -hmm. began. But well, well, interesting that, point. We also heard that the generals. Interesting told, point. Like Gusso right, and, right, and exactly. they, are, they are now trying to do that now. The generals should be careful. Mm -hmm. The Gusso and IBB should be careful 
not to become irredentist in this yeah. political yeah. Swift state. Well, this is about Nigeria, not about will. the region. Absolutely, Please. absolutely. Ohanese too is also, you know, making an interesting point, going by, you know, Vanguard there, denying, rejecting Atiku, and says they are yet to make a, a, a position, even though other, you know, pan uh, social cultural groups, you know, have also, you know, well, condemned uh, Atiku's emergence, the, saying it, they won't give the, him their votes. Yeah, re recall that there was the, a report credited to Haneze earlier that uh, the, they, they didn't support Atiku's candidature. Because of the uh, issue of zoning, exactly. which the party didn't go well, However, uh, them, them coming to clear the air now uh, puts things in, in perspective. But however, the place of Haneze Ndibu, when it comes to, of, of course, we know it is a social, social cultural, you know, organization. But because it is an umbrella of the Igbo people, it is expected that they will be able to wield some level of influence, governizing uh, the southeastern leaders and politicians together to see how they can become strategic towards, you know, what the position of the East will be. But... It has because of the egalitarian, you know, nature of the southeastern cultural history and all of that. It permeates into politics the way they also play politics, where th there's some level of individual individualism. Yes. Politics comes out of culture. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So when when we're talking about for me the cohesion, where all of them should stand on what, especially seeing that if you put all the, the geopolitical zones together, the southeast seem to be a little disadvantaged. By the now, number of now, states. Now, the interesting thing will be that. Exactly. The interesting thing will be that when Atiku decides to pick his running mate, mm. if he does not go east, will it mean that he has now zoned out the Igbos mm. as an integral part of his campaign? But. The East is saying, we are not here for second fiddle. Mm -hmm. We have said it. Mm. Maybe that's why Obi moves to... And he has gotten the ticket. Party, and and he has gotten party. the Labour Party so ticket now. So is, is the East now in a dilemma? So he gets the spotlight. We can't get the f f number one ticket, but we don't want number two. Mm. So do we lose both number one and number, and two, number two out of pride? So where do, where do we now place the East? Does it mean that the East has played itself out of contention? Or is it that the PDP has played the East out of contention? Remember, the East gave a block vote to PDP in the last election. Well, even the one before that, what made the Buhari to talk about uh, 5% and yeah, 95%? And 90%. Under the article, <laughs> <laughs> so the, is, is, the article, uh, ticket, article ticket must have a lot of problems because some people believe he's speaking with uh, Wiki, he's speaking with Udom, mm. he's speaking with Okoa, Okoa, and so on and so forth. And if he goes that route, where does the ego stand? Mm. In, in the, the entire system. equation. In but I think system. it's fascinating for me uh, now that uh, uh, Peter Obi, you know, has gotten the presidential uh, flag bearer ticket now of, of the Labour Party. Of course, with the permutations yesterday, um, people stepping down for him. Uh, the only female aspirant there saying she would rather, you know, wait and see how it pans out. She was said to have refused to stand down, uh, to step down for him at a point. But the long and short is that so he has emerged as the flag bearer of the, of the Labour Party. Uh, so it will be interesting to see how you know what this means for the Igbo desire to for, for president uh, come 2023 uh, this and many more and then if you look on the flip side at you know the drama that plays played out uh, in Abuja still uh, talking about the APC presidential screening and uh, this is good to know now that there is now more clarity on the Jonathan issue yeah Saying as he was absent, his name wasn't reeled out, you know, as well as um, some others. Uh, but uh, Okorocha still said to be in the race. Uh, well, he, he's, uh, Okorocha is still in the race from uh, as, as far as the books are concerned. But with with him appearing in court, you know, and he has all a of that, big day he in has, court. He had, he had a big day in court, and uh, I today. think he's also still supposed to be in court today. So we wait to see how that is going to be because. Uh, the rule of law has to take its own, has to take its own course in its own way. But in the issue of uh, uh, Jonathan, 
I, I think sometimes when we keep, uh, when we don't make decisive clarification on things, sometimes it, it tends to drag and then create a lot of speculations here and there. Because at the time, a lot of persons became angry and became, uh, you know, it was kind of unsettling the APC that they were going to forces were working mm. at bringing Jonah or drafting mm. him into APC and all of that. A lot of people saw it, uh, analyzing it, said that it would be a big disaster. For, for the party in, in that regard. All right, uh, gentlemen, so, so there we have it now, the big stories uh, as reported ideas, uh, in the papers also, this morning. Hmm. There, Elsewhere? There's an interesting news story today about um, the crew, the crew of uh, uh, the, the air, air, airline crew, especially the foreign ones. Hmm. They, cost, uh, uh, they are costing Nigeria 1.62 billion it's in the Guardian today hmm. every month. Hmm. So that is what uh, is a very interesting story that this is what politicians hmm. are doing today. Exactly. That, that every month they spend about 1.62 billion flying, flying across, across. Flying across <laughs> and burning a lot of fuel, burning a lot of the, our the money. Especially at this the time. Air, the air that is not available. Burning, a, really, really burning costly a lot venture. of our, burning a lot of our money, hmm. you know, because they want to go there and distribute some dollars and go there and talk to one, one big man hmm. to um, get uh, their attention. Yeah. But, well, but, they, but on the positive, that should also mean well for the aviation industry so, somehow. Looking well, at you know, there is more money. We well, well, want to balance it that way. But the, but the, the most right. important thing is that right. money is going into somewhere that should have gone somewhere else. Exactly.